The activity of wolves, ministers, and the harlot church of Rome. That is the message uh, I have for you today, ladies and gentlemen. This is actually a recording from uh, 2020, but it's worth uh, repeating uh, and sharing with you again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, dealing with ministers, modern-day ministers, some some alive, some are dead, who... Uh, we're working hand in hand with the harlot church of Rome. They have no problem at all working with the system of Rome, a system that preaches a counterfeit gospel. So as I shout this warning once again, pay attention carefully as you see the way uh, the modern day uh, church of Rome with Pope uh, Francis, the way they operate, uh, the way they refer to uh, one another as brothers as he speaks to uh, Protestant pastors. Okay, so here I am, ladies and gentlemen, once again, as a former Roman Catholic, uh, the, the Lord called me out of that church. The spirit of the living God delivered me I mean, that's the mercy of God. That's a blessing, uh, being born again of the Spirit. And uh, just keep in mind, you know, I'm born again uh, the biblical way. The, the Church of Rome, you know, they teach that uh, a little infant when they're baptized, that they're uh, born again, that they become a child of God. That's when they become part of the uh, children of God, uh, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, keep these things in mind as you listen to this uh, message here, the activity of of wolves ministers and the harlot church of rome i want to begin this message here uh, with a quote from um, kenneth copeland uh, regarding a request that i received from pope francis this had to do with that video me uh with the pope spoke by video at a meeting in uh, 2014 so um this is what mr copeland had to say recently I received a message from Pope Francis in which he asked that as a ministry and part of the body of Christian believers, we pray for him. In 1 Timothy 2, uh, verse 2, the Bible teaches that we are to pray for all that are in authority. It is scriptural that we do so, and therefore it is our duty to honor the Pope's request and as a body of believers, join our faith with his by coming together in unity and agreeing with him in his quest and for what is in his heart, the unity of the body of Christ. So in obedience to our Lord and his word, we join our faith with that of Pope Francis as we pray with and for him that he will receive the righteous desire of his heart. According to the words of Jesus in Mark 11 and 24, that whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you've received them and you shall have them. Our desire, along with that of Pope Francis, is in the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This is very important to us all as the body of Christ. So there you have it, folks. Here's a, a seduction that uh, has been going on for literally centuries. We have the Pope making a request uh, that they pray for him. And uh, so, you know, Mr. Copeland quotes, you know, that we should pray for all that are in authority. Now, that's a good thing to do. You can pray for leaders of countries and so on and so forth. But here we have a request coming uh, and he's treating the Pope as part of the body of of believers and joining our faith with his, meaning the Pope, meaning the Roman Catholic Pope, uh, together in unity, okay? So uh, there's a big difference between praying for those in authority, okay? You can pray for leaders, and, you know, I pray for people in authority. I pray that the Lord wake them up and save their souls. I do that all the time. I pray for the leaders in authority. You could pray for the leader in China, the man's an unsaved soul, uh, leading a whole country, that man needs to be saved because he is in such gross deception, my oh my, and the Christians are suffering big time over in China like you would never believe. I pray the Lord save the man's soul. I mean, the man's on the road to hell, there's no question about it. So that's the way you're supposed to pray. You don't pray for a pope, okay? I was delivered out from the system of Roman Catholicism. The spirit of the living God saved my soul from the Roman Catholic Church. 
You see, that's my testimony, folks. So to hear a man saying, let's join together, it's, we're joining, you know, it's all about the unity of the body in Christ and how we obey the Lord. So this is what you need to see, folks. You do not unify with a church that preaches a counterfeit, soul-damning gospel. Don't ever forget that. So what I'm saying here in this message, as the title said, unity with the church of Rome is unity with the devil. Don't ever forget that. You know, the, the Bible makes it clear that there's a curse upon a false gospel, and most certainly the gospel of Rome is a counterfeit gospel. Galatians uh, chapter 1, verses 8 to 10, you'll see uh, where the Apostle Paul spoke uh, about that. So this is what we're dealing with, folks. So uh, th think about this. This whole congregation with Kenneth Copeland Ministries, hear this Pope <laughs> he gains entrance into what they would say is a Christian church. He's speaking uh, to the people. It, it is simply unbelievable. And this is how seduction works for folks. First Timothy uh, chapter 4, verse 1, uh, it says this, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits, and doctrines of devils or demons. Uh, people walk away from the faith. Some shall be seduced, okay? Desert the faith. This is what we're dealing with here, folks. So as a former Roman Catholic, I can assure you, ladies and gentlemen, millions upon millions of people have been hoodwinked already. They're being set up for big trouble as they as they uh, do what's uh, what took place here. This was uh, like six years ago, folks, 2014. So this has been going on for many, many years. And in that video, uh, that Pope, the current Pope Francis, he says, and let's pray to the Lord. He unites us all. Come on, we are brothers. You see that? It's the sound of hell. It's the sound of the devil. Come on, we are brothers. This is a system, folks, <laughs> that has deceived multitudes of millions for centuries. This is a system that put to death multitudes of people in the most barbaric uh, fashion, tortured, burnt at the stake. Don't ever forget that, folks. Think about this. Can you find the Lord Jesus Christ or his followers uh, killing people, burning people at the stake? Uh, you, you'll find nothing of it. The, the system of Roman Catholicism is a counterfeit, soul-damning system. And, and here you have Mr. Copeland uh, with, with his whole congregation talking about unifying unity with the system of Rome. You know, come on, we're all brothers. You know, the, the false unity uh, alarm should be ringing, folks, louder than ever before. Uh, do you remember when Billy Graham met with uh, the Pope, Pope John Paul II? There was a similar type of... Uh, a conversation uh, that went on. Here's a, a, a quote from Christianity Today, May 24, 2005. It says, Billy Graham had never met a pope until John Paul II invited him to Rome in 1981, ushered into the papal apartments by the Vatican's famous Swiss Guard. Graham marveled at the pomp. He and the pope chatted like long-lost friends for half an hour, swapping photos, gifts, and travel stories. Before Graham left, John Paul II reached over, clutched Graham's thumb, and told him, We are brothers. My, oh, my. He should have flew out of that place. He, he should have taken a jet as quick as he could. There he was, seduced into the Vatican apartments, and here you have this leader, John Paul II, this man who had sewed on the inside of his papal garments, told us to assume Maria, Mary, I am totally yours. And here he's grabbing Billy Graham and saying, we are brothers. You see this, folks? Seduction at its worst. My, oh, my this is what is going on, folks. It's been going on for decades. You know, I got saved in uh, 1989, plucked out of the darkness of Roman Catholicism, folks. And stuff like this has been going on long before I came to know the Lord. 
From that same article, Christianity Today, May 24, 2005, it says, Graham revealed nothing of the Pope's message in 1981. At the time of their meeting, John Paul II had been Pope less than three years. An assertion of spiritual kinship would have been ill-received by the bulk of both their constituencies. But by 1990, when Graham related this story to Time journalist David Aikman, the climate had changed considerably. Key to the thaw were John Paul II's efforts to beat back communism worldwide. So, you know, uh, seduction sometimes it works slow, but uh, folks, trust me, Rome has an agenda. Rome has a global agenda agenda. Don't ever forget that. So, uh, you know, the devil's in no rush. You know, you're beginning to see the manifestation of, of Satan's work bloom uh, in these uh, current days that we are living in. The, the wolves in sheep's clothing are beginning to show themselves for what they truly are. Are. You know, there are millions of Christians that they have a nostalgic and sentimental view of Billy Graham, but I am not numbered among that group. You know, if a man joins hands with a system such as Roman Catholicism, listen to me, then he's not my brother in Christ. He's not my brother in the Lord, because the Lord, by his spirit, by the Holy Spirit, he saved my soul out of that demonic system. You know, that's where the rubber meets the road, folks. You have to make a decision as to whether the words of Billy Graham are true regarding the Roman Catholic Church or whether the scriptures are true. You know, wh wh who's telling the truth here? Is it the Word of God? Is it the Bible? Or is it Billy Graham? So the road to Rome is a slippery slope. And before you know it, you're going to find your hands joining hand. Uh, you're going to join hands with a system that you would have never dreamed of joining hands uh, with folks. You know, I was not a born-again uh, Christian during the time when Catherine Kuhlman was a well-known preacher, but I did read about her gross compromise uh, with the Roman Catholic Church. You know, she had uh, Roman Catholic priests and nuns regularly right up there on the platform uh, with her. Uh, I, I think she said um, it lent credibility to her Ministry. So back to this video uh, at that Copeland meeting, the Pope said, let's give each other a spiritual hug and let God complete the work that he has begun. So, you know, when I see the Pope repent of his uh, false teachings, which include the teaching of the Catholic Mass, where they say that satisfies the justice of God for sins committed against him. When I see the Pope repent of the false teachings of purgatory, Mary worship, his false teaching that you're born again when you're baptized as an infant, you know, maybe we, we could maybe give each other a little hug one day. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it, folks. You know, the man needs to repent. He preaches a false gospel my oh my so in fact i tell you folks uh any christian who has no problem with the false teaching of the roman catholic uh church and, and their mass they're defying the lord jesus christ himself you know it's an insult it's disgraceful uh to teach that a mass satisfies the justice of god you know because the, the price was paid in full you know i quote romans chapter 5 uh, very often, verses 6 to 10, 6 to 9. Um, he, he, he paid the price, folks. We, we're justified by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a done deal. John 19 and 30, it is finished. So, so it's an insult, an absolute insult. You know, but I find that most Christians, that they're not interested. Uh, absolutely not interested. So, but you, you have a choice, folks. Be, I'm warning you because I know what's coming, folks. You can see the handwriting on the wall. In fact, recently, uh, you know, I, I saw another video with a, um, the Pope w w was talking about, you know, people uh, of, of other faiths, meaning, uh, and uh, Muslims and people who believe in Buddha. And it was all about love, okay? It was all about love and saying, we're all children of God. Hear me now. Uh, the, the people of Islam, they believe in Allah, okay? They don't even believe that God has a son. Now think about that for a couple of seconds. So, so here's Jesus Christ, the son of God. <laughs> you see what we're dealing with, folks? 
Uh, the Bible makes it clear, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ uh, is the Son of God manifest in the, in the flesh, you know, the Bible talks that, about that as being in the Antichrist spirit. So we're dealing with a, a Pope who is of an Antichrist spirit. He's teaching things that are totally opposed to what Christ himself spoke. Back to that video. Here's what else the Pope said. He says, and this is a miracle. The miracle of unity has begun. He went on to quote a man uh, with uh, the name of Manzoni. And, and he said, that man said, I've never seen God begin a miracle without him finishing it well. And then he went on to say, he will complete this miracle of unity. Now listen to that. I've never seen God begin a miracle without him finishing it. Well, there's only one problem, Pope Francis. God never began this miracle of unity between a, a system that preaches a false gospel and a Christian who preaches the true gospel. There can never be unity like that. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Impossible. So uh, you see how people are seduced, folks? You see, it's the love trap. We're all one. We're all one. That, that's the devil's wine, folks. We're all one. Come together. We're all one. We're all one. Don't believe that lie, folks. And then the Pope uh, ended his little video uh, talk. He said, from brother to brother, I embrace you. Thank you. Listen to that. I'll say it again. From brother to brother, I embrace you. Thank you. And think about once again, Pope John Paul II grabbing Billy Graham. We are brothers. You see, we're not brothers. You're not brothers, folks. Uh, you can, if you think you're a brother with with the Church of Rome, then then, then I need to pray for you. Uh, you need to pray. You need to repent. This is some serious folk uh, stuff, folks. Um, unbelievable stuff, actually. So. Um, let me give you a couple of quotes here, folks. Uh, John 16, verse 13. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. So here, the Lord Jesus Christ, he's talking about the spirit of truth. It's the Holy Spirit. Okay, And he's telling us that he, the Holy Spirit, will guide us into all truth. Okay, So when you open up the scriptures, folks, and you read, you pray the Holy Spirit will guide you. You know, I, I, I remember all the way back in 1989 when I was born again of the Spirit. The Bible lit up to me. It, 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 God illuminated the Word. He, he gave me the understanding. So when I saw the things that I was into in the Church of Rome, and I said, you know, I've spoken many times how I used to be into these apparitions at Medjugorje, and you look at the messages of the apparition of Mary, okay? It's not Mary, it's a devil. It's a demon. And, and you start examining what that uh, demon was saying, disguised as Mary, and comparing it to the Word of God, the, the Lord set me free and said, look, here's the deal. You, th either this is true or that's true. And folks, that's, you know, hundreds of millions of people are deceived to this day as I speak. You know, you can... You can go into and look at the messages of Fatima, uh, Lords, Guadalupe. You compare the words, okay? How, you know, most of the time uh, these apparitions, these demon apparitions appear to young children. People, uh, these young kids have no idea what the word says, folks. He's able to get over on people, and, 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 and people love signs and wonders. They absolutely love signs and wonders, and they get seduced. And, and now, now the, the system of Rome has seduced uh, millions of Christians into saying we can all be one. You know, that, that document, the ECT is what they call it, 1994, Evangelicals and Catholics uh, together. Um, they say, oh, we're one now. And then, you know, we, in fact, that... Uh, that man, Tony Palmer, who, who uh, died in a car accident, he used to talk about, that, well, the, the, uh, the Protestant Reformation is over. You know, the Lutherans and, and the Catholics, they signed an agreement. And we're, or that, that's all over with now. We all, we're all together. Well, let me tell you about another document, folks. 
My document contains 66 books. It's called the Bible. And that document tells me the Reformation is not over. That document called the Bible lets me know that the Church of Rome preaches a soul-damning gospel. That's the only document that I am going to trust, folks. The Word of God. Ephesians 5, 6 to 11, from that document, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the world. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. That's what we're supposed to do, ladies and gentlemen. I told this story before, but I know I have new listeners sometimes. You know, <clears throat> I was going to a Christian church, and uh, we met this lady, and she was a charismatic type of personality. And... Um, we told her our testimony, my wife and I, how we came out of the Catholic darkness, the darkness of Rome, and, you know, I had a nice conversation. Uh, I, I forget exactly the whole conversation, but about a year later, we met the same same lady, and it was funny, in almost the exact same spot, and we're talking with her, and uh, she knew that we were former Catholics, and she let us know. She, she came up to me, and she says, you know, brother, uh, I'm in a prayer group now, and I'm praying with charismatic Catholics. So I said to her, I said, be careful, sister. I says, before long, they will have you praying the rosary. The woman looked at me, and she says, I feel sick. They already have me praying the rosary. Oh yes, I know a divine appointment when I see one, folks. Most people are mute regarding the Church of Rome. They won't say a, a peep. And that's why uh, we are where we are, that the shepherds, the pastors, that they, they turn a blind eye, folks. And what an account they're going to give. I'm telling you, folks, what an account before Almighty God that they had the opportunity to stand in these last days and they didn't do it. Oh my, oh my. Matthew 7 and 15, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. That's right from the mouth of Jesus Christ himself. So here the Lord saves my soul out of the wicked darkness of Roman Catholicism. And, and for decades, people are joining in unity with them. And I, I, would, I would look at this and say, you have to be kidding me. You must be kidding me. How a pastor can stand in the pulpit and allow stuff like that to go on is beyond me. I mean, it is simply unbelievable. So remember the title of the message, The Activity of Wolves, Ministers, and the Harlot Church of Rome. You have a great day and be blessed in the Lord Jesus Christ.